Welcome to Shikama Live. Today I'm going to breach a topic that I believe uh, really strongly in and that I hear so many Americans uh, talk about and I think they are just confused. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that they are just confused. And what are they confused about? The role of government in our lives. Namely, does the government have the authority to look out for our welfare. I get into so many heated debates and arguments uh, in person, over the internet, uh, over telephone calls, in chat rooms, and the person arguing against me always invariably says, government is supposed to watch out for our welfare. Government is supposed to Look out for our benefit. If it weren't for government, black people would still be slaves. That's kind of interesting because in their ignorance, they believe that slavery would, would have continued on indefinitely, at least in the United States. But if they take just a little bit of, uh, of a peek overseas, even in Mexico, they would have seen, seen that slavery was already decaying and stopping and and being reversed and not only that but because the way slavery operated over sleeve overseas there wasn't this whole black people are inferior theory that they had working in fact slavery overseas did not look anything like slavery in the United States. Not that I want to harp on slavery, but let's continue on just a little tiny bit because there are ignorant people, uneducated people, miseducated people in the United States. Overseas, the slave is the person that took care of your business, that did your accounting, that ran your business, that ordered your product, that kept people in line as far as the vendors, the clientele. That's what a slave overseas, overseas did. On a plantation, the slaves ran the plantation. Yes, they, they didn't get paid as much. Oh wait, you didn't know that. Slaves overseas got paid. They got a stipend. They, they got reimbursement. Why wouldn't they get a reimbursement? It seems kind of crazy not to pay somebody to run your business for you. There's no incentive in it for him to run uh, the business and stay at the business. Uh, slavery overseas looked almost like what we have today that we call jobs. Isn't that amazing? Hold up. You, you're disagreeing. I'm sure you're, you're saying, no, 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 that can't be, that can't be. Oh, but yes, it was. You see, overseas, they paid slaves to do the accounting, to order the product, to run inventory, to do the planting, to organize the planting, to, to transport the goods, to, wait a minute, <laughs> it, it seems impossible in Americans' minds to even conceive of this, slaves were ordered to order ships, load the ships, get on the ship, go to England, unload the ship, come back on the ship, and come back. Slaves. Quote unquote slaves. And all for all of that, they got paid to do it. Now, where is the word slavery even come into that? It's slavery. You don't understand what you're doing. You think you're going to a job. It's slavery. When the Supreme Court of the United States, after they say, after slavery was abolished and ratified by the Constitution, that if a man lends himself out, it is voluntary slavery. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you weren't taught that in school, were you? Go look it up, Supreme Court case. I don't know the uh, name of the case. Go look it up for yourself. A job is considered voluntary slavery. Yes, you are paid for it, but you are enslaving yourself for the profit of another. That's according to the Supreme Court. So this thing that happened overseas, where they were paid, where they weren't beaten 
at least not all the time, where they were in charge of things. They learned skills when slavery, quote unquote, was abolished. Very little changed except for the beating part and except for the you can't go anywhere part and you have to live here part. That's basically what changed overseas. So overseas, the whole notion of slavery, uh, which was abolished, simply meant that you could move somewhere else if you're going to continue to work and lend yourself out, lease yourself out for pay. You are still a slave. It's just that they don't call it slavery anymore and you have a little bit more for a little bit more freedoms. Now, in these arguments that say the government must take care of us, obviously the government is not taking care of us because we are all working slaves. The government is not taking care of. And let me point out something. The Constitution doesn't say the government must take care of you. The Constitution doesn't say the government must look out for your benefit. The Constitution doesn't say the government has to look out for your welfare. The government in the Constitution, in the U.S. Constitution, is limited and its powers are enumerated. The government shall do this. The government shall not do this. And if we haven't said it in the Constitution, the government cannot do it at all. Our government is a limited government. It is not an unfettered, unlimited government. We have enumerated powers for our government. Anything that is not enumerated in the Constitution is unconstitutional. Welfare, food stamps, Obamacare is unconstitutional. It is not. The government doesn't have the authority nor the responsibility to look out for the welfare of Americans. The Constitution says just the opposite. The government shall not infringe upon your welfare, shall not infringe upon your good graces, shall not infringe on your pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The government shall not infringe on that. Taxing you to death, taxing you out of all of your money is infringement. It is slavery to the very government that is supposedly said that slavery is over, it's done with, and shall never henceforth uh, darken our shores. That's what our government is about. That's what it's supposed to be about. That's what our that's the agreement that we have coming into signing the dotted line to be citizens of the United States. And let's and speaking of the states, let's talk about the states. Anything not enumerated and limited to the federal government is reserved for the states. Black people, stop Stop lying to yourselves and saying, if it hadn't been for this federal government, slavery was over worldwide. The United States was the last bastion of slavery. And why was that? Because white people had to confuse themselves and lie to themselves and say that black people were inferior. While overseas, it's the black people who were the accountants, the managers, the inventory, uh, the uh, engineers, yes, blacks were the engineers overseas. They built the bridges, they built the roads. You understand that it was a black man that designed and helped construct Washington, D.C. And even New York, I hear. Engineers, that's us. In the United States, uh, we are uh, led to believe that black people are something inferior. It's only in the United States. Overseas, while you might have somebody racist, uh, they don't uh, believe that black people are inferior. They just don't like black people. You don't have to think uh, somebody's inferior to you to, you to not like them. Uh, your ex-wife, do you think she's inferior to you, the one that you hate? Is she inferior to you? No, you just hate her. She's just an evil evil person, right? Isn't that the, the whole wash of it? That's 
that's racism overseas. That's the whole Muslim thing that uh, if you're not a Muslim, we don't like you. Uh, you're an infidel. Uh, we're going to kill you. It's not that they think you're inferior. They just don't like you. In the United States, they had to convince the white population that black people were inferior. And because of that, you don't mix with inferior people. You don't talk to inferior people. And you don't allow inferior people to do anything. But let's back up a little bit more. I'll, uh, again, after slavery was abolished, these skilled workers of the South were 100%, almost 100% black. Uh, all of the jobs were black jobs. Plumbers, engineers, electricians, carpenters, uh, home builders, black, 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 black. With the advent of slavery being abolished and black people being able to move, they made this big transition to the North and the North responded with unions because they didn't want the competition from black people who could do the job and who were offering to do the job for less money than white people. So they unionized and they passed laws that said this has to be a union job. This particular job is a union job. Now, these people who argue with me and who say, oh, the government must look out for our welfare. Now you know a little bit more about our history. I said uh, that you should learn about American history specifically, uh, specifically American history, but you should learn about History as a New Year's resolution. Educate yourself throughout this year on the history of not only the world, but the United States. These people who argue with me and say that oh, the government has a responsibility to look out for our welfare. I've already shown you that, that that's not true. It's unconstitutional for the government to say everybody must go to a church three times a month. Yet, they pass Obamacare. The government is uh, has limited powers. Here is the crux of the matter. If you are so intent that the poor should have a fair shake in, in medical uh, health care, write a check. If you think that uh, starving black children shouldn't go hungry, write a check. If you think that children shouldn't suffer uh, to have no roof over their head, write a check. If you think that pregnant teenage moms shouldn't be kicked out of their houses by their parents, write a check. If you think that drug addicts uh, who are robbing, uh, maiming, uh, pillaging in the streets and that they should be put into uh, rehabilitation centers, write a check. That's it. You take responsibility if you really care. The people that you're saying should be taken care of and that the government should take care of, it's like you're stupid and you're shooting yourself in the face. The government doesn't take care of people. The government doesn't make money. The only money that the government makes is through the taxes that they collect from. Who, who do they collect the taxes from? the very poor people that you're so concerned about. So get the government out of uh, writing checks for uh, welfare, uh, Obamacare, uh, food, food stamps. Get the government out of all of that. Medicare, Medicaid, Social Security. Write a check. You take responsibility. If you're so concerned about it, if, you, if your heart is bleeding so much about it, write a check. Write a check. The very people that you're trying to help by saying, by voting into office, these people who say that they're going to help the poor are the very people who turn around and tax the poor. Poor people pay far more money as far as income is concerned than anybody else in the United States. You with your $100,000 a year job, each husband and wife, have a, an accountant who get who reduces all of your taxes to the point where you pay 
three percent uh, taxes yearly the poor person doesn't have an accountant uh, with a Harvard degree who can't comb through the IRS uh, legal mumbo jumbo and take deductions from their income taxes and they have to pay their 35 percent right up front and and if they are going to get a, uh, a, a, a a tax refund now because of Obamacare, if they sign up for Obamacare, that tax free refund is held. Why? Because they have to pay back now any subsidy that they got through Obamacare. So instead of paying $300 a month, they have to pay $50 a month for Obamacare and they got a subsidy when when time comes for that tax refund they're not gonna get it all of that is taken away that's your government that's how your government operates and you saying that the government needs to help the poor they helped them all right they helped them right out of their money and right out of their lives poor people don't live so well if you're so concerned Write a check and stop voting for increases in taxes in your city, in your state, in your federal government. Stop it. You write a check. Take responsibility. If you're such a bleeding heart, write a check. Don't go out and, and say, hey, everybody, let's all vote for this new tax. Instead, you should say, go out and say, hey, everybody, if you're so concerned, write a check. Write a check for the poor. Write a check, go into your wallet and take out money and write a check. When that homeless guy uh, asks you for money uh, just for uh, another hit of uh, wild goose or wild turkey or gin or whatever, I don't drink. And you say, no, why don't you turn around and say, yes, my good fellow, I care about the poor and you are poor. Here's $20, here's $50, here's $100, go get yourself something good get this guy off of our taxes that he's tax taxing me. I can't afford to pay for myself and him. I can't afford it. Have you heard that? Have you seen this? Have you seen this one about the guy, the, uh, the uh, liberal newscaster who said uh, that he could not afford Obamacare, although he thought it was a fantastic idea, he couldn't afford Obamacare. He could not afford it. He says there's no way for him to afford it. Even at making $50,000 a year, he cannot afford Obamacare. Why? Because Obamacare in the bronze package says that he has to pay $400 a month with a $13,000 deductible and he cannot afford it. He cannot afford it and all of his liberal followers all said, you're stupid. How dare you say such a thing? You can afford it. You're just being lazy. You're just allocating your money wrongly. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So the guy who wants to have a car, have a house, a roof overhead, wants to uh, uh, eat, uh, wants to have clothes on his back, who says that after all of that and pay off his student loans, wait, we can't forget that too, right? Has to pay off his student loans, has nothing left and has nearly no savings, cannot afford Obamacare, yet people are trying to now tell him how to spend his money. That's exactly the point that we libertarians are saying. The government has no place telling you how to spend your money and the government shouldn't be taking your money in the first place. The whole idea of the United States was that the government was not going to tax the population. And the government is not supposed to be this big, huge thing with hundreds of agencies that they pay people to be in. That was not the intention of the U.S. Constitution and this whole American experiment. These liberal people are now trying to eat their young by saying, telling this guy what he can and cannot afford. Th that's the whole point. And now I'm, I'm, I'm predicting this guy is going to turn into a conservative or even a libertarian within a year. After all of the, the lambasting, the insults, the jobs, everything, the barbs and arrows thrown at him from the liberals, and he's a liberal, write a check. If you care so much, write a check for that guy. He can't afford it. We, even with $50,000 a year, he cannot afford it. 
after all of his expenses, all of his expenses, he can't even save, have a savings account, uh, nor have any uh, sort of lifestyle whatsoever. But they want to tell him that he can afford Obamacare and that he's just being too lazy and that he's being uh, stupid by saying that he can't afford Obamacare. The fact is the man can't afford Obamacare. Have they looked at it? Have these liberals who really care about it looked at it? Write a check. Write him a check. That's what you do. If you care so much, write a check. The government doesn't need an IRS. The government doesn't need a, an EPA. It doesn't need an FDA. If something goes wrong, you sue the person. Our court system works fabulous uh, that way. And if you really care about it, uh, if you really care uh, about the court system, maybe it is not working how you want it to work, uh, you know, I'll gather you up about a hundred poor people that something has happened to and you start you a nice class action lawsuit. And because in the class people will pay for the lawyer, the lawyer will be more than happy to stick it to whomever uh, he wants, he needs to stick it to. Write a check. Get the government out of it, write a check. If you care so much, write a check. Thank you for watching Shikama Live. Leave a comment below. It helps me to get the word out.